The liver is an interesting organ because it's, uh, we say that it's an altruistic organ because it really puts or helps all the organs in our, in our body. What do I mean by this? <clears throat> this glycogen that is stored in the liver is mainly used to supply glucose to the circulation whenever glucose levels are low. So if you go on a low carbohydrate diet or if you stop eating and you need to maintain your blood glucose levels constant, liver is the organ that really does the job for that. First, it uses the glycogen that is stored within itself. This is the glycogen that was formed after you ate foods that contain carbohydrates. So it, made, it makes a reserve for your body. So when you, then if you go on, if you fast, if you go on a diet that is very restrictive in carbohydrate, you still need to maintain your blood glucose levels. Remember when we spoke that glucose is not, or carbohydrate is not an essential nutrient? Because your body can make glucose. So in liver, initially uses glycogen that is stored within itself. But there is a point that it's going to run out of the glycogen because, again, you don't have an unlimited capacity to store. It's, the storage is limited to maximum, let's say, five, uh, 100 grams of glucose. Now, depending on how long you are fasting or how long you are depriving your body from carbohydrates, dietary carbohydrates, you're going to start releasing this glucose to maintain blood glucose levels, but eventually the liver is going to also going to run out of that glycogen. So liver has the capacity to fabricate glucose, if you will, and it's a process called gluconeogenesis. So you take, for instance, lactate, you take glycerol, you can use amino acids that come from protein, and then you can convert them into glucose, and liver does that. So again, gluconeogenesis. And that's why you can fast for days, weeks, and you're still going to have your blood glucose levels maintained within a relatively narrow range. And this is because your liver will make glucose when it runs out of glycogen. But we also learned that maintenance of your blood glucose levels after a meal depends largely also on skeletal muscle because you have a large compartment that makes up your, your muscle. Again, 40% of body weight in men and approximately 30% in women on average. So you have a large compartment, so you can store glycogen in your muscle. The difference between muscle and liver is that muscle is more selfish as opposed to liver that is selfless. Liver, again, takes care of make sure that glucose is supplied to in the circulation and maintained within a narrow range. The muscle, once it stores glycogen, it keeps for itself. It won't release glucose as liver does. So that glucose that is in your muscle will be used within the muscle for energy for itself. It may release, break down glucose and form lactate, and lactate can exit the muscle and go to the liver, and the liver can use that lactate to make glucose. But the lip muscle itself is not an organ that is supposed to release glucose in the circulation, even though it has a store or a, 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 a reserve of glycogen within itself. And again, we also learned that the muscle uh, requires insulin to take up quite a bit of glucose and also to synthesize glycogen. Another important thing. Glyc uh, skeletal muscle contains glu one, which is a glucose transporter that is sitting on the membrane all the time. But it can only take a small amount of glucose. So it actually provides a basal amount of sugar to the muscle at any point in time. Now, if you need to really boost the uptake of glucose, which in the presence of insulin takes place, you need to bring in another transporter that we said it is GLUT4. GLUT4 is sequestered inside of the cell in vesicles. So insulin triggers the cascade of events that actually tell that vesicle to migrate from the cytoplasm to the membrane. It fuses with the membrane and open additional doors so glucose can get in. So GLUT1, 
and GLUT4. Adipose tissue is the same. Adipose tissue also has GLUT1, but only can take that small amount of glucose under basal conditions. After a meal, when glucose goes up, you need to really increase the influx of sugar inside of the cells. So in the way you do this again, it requires insulin. Insulin does the same thing that it does in, in, in liver, uh, sorry, in muscle, and tells the adipose tissue to also translocate GLUT4 from the cytoplasm to the membrane. And again, you open more doors, glucose goes in. Now, glucose, the adipocyte, or the fat cell, uses glucose to make glycerol. Glycerol serves as a backbone that you sterify fatty acids and you make triacylglycerol, which is abbreviated as TG, because this is a neutral form of fat that is stored in the adipose tissue. Here, you can store almost unlimited amounts because this is hydrophobic, so it doesn't take water, as opposed to what happens in muscle and liver when you put glycogen in. Because in both cases, it takes uh, water in a one to three, one to four ratio. In the adipose tissue, that's not the case because the adipose tissue stores triglycerides and that is hydrophobic, so it doesn't require water. That's why during the evolutionary process, humans de uh, uh, develop the adipose tissue as the site to store energy, large amounts of energy because you can pack up quite a bit of energy without bringing in water, which is the case when you do with glucose. So glucose is limited. You have a small, relatively small amount that is stored approximately all over in your entire body, including muscle and liver, approximately 2,000 calories, which you can run out pretty quickly. Quickly, If you run a marathon, you usually spend 2,400, 2,500 calories. So you cannot run only on sugar. You're going to have to run that using fat. So, but fat is almost unlimited because you can store it in a in the absence of water entirely. The other important thing, this triglycerides that you store there, you need to be able to also undo it, break it down. So what happens is if you go on a if you fast, or if you go on a very limited carbohydrate diet, what happens is that your body instead of starts to it's going to run out of glycogen in the liver. It's going to make some glucose from other components, but it will use an alternative source of energy, which is stored in triglycerides. That's why when you're fasting, when when you're exercising, or when you are on a very low carbohydrate diet, your body goes and mobilizes fat from the adipose tissue. So this triglycerides, the same way that you can form a molecule to store energy, you need to be able to go there and break it down. And then it's called lipolysis. So you break down triglycerides and you release fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids can be used by the muscle, can be used by the liver to form energy or to produce energy. Glycerol. That also is separated from that triacylglycerol molecule, goes to the liver, liver uses it to make glucose. So this is a very useful source of substrate for energy directly if you're going to use fat, because fat can be oxidized in both organs, and then you can also use glycerol to make glucose, which liver uses that, gluconeogenic. 